What's up guys? Matt here with Matco Metalworks and uh, got a little project today. I've had this for, for a month or two, just uh, now getting around to it. It's, um, this is a brake drum off of a semi, or actually it's off a dump truck, but same thing. It's uh, extremely heavy and extremely big. And um, so the project is gonna be to make a stand uh, for our vise. Because the vise I've got, is, it used to be mounted to the table and it always got in the way because it was right on the corner. And so I'd have to unbolt it and move it if we were doing a bigger project or whatever. And um, then we started clamping it to the table and then we're moving it all the time. So I'm gonna fix that today. And hopefully, I think I can pretty much do it with everything we've got here in the shop. I'll show you the drop rack here in a minute and um, you can kind of see. But I've got a piece somewhere, uh, there it is. I've got a piece of, I think it's 3 8 plate that I'm hoping is gonna fit this. And I'm actually gonna bolt it on here. So 13 and a half is uh, probably what we need. And I think these pieces right here are almost exactly that. Let's see. These are some drops actually have Let's see what that is. oh perfect oh 14 that's actually gonna be so freaking close these were some drops I had actually I had to cut some retainer rings for another project and I used the piece that actually came on the outside of this <laughs> Couldn't be more perfect. So what I'm gonna do is make that. I'm actually going to bolt that. I'm gonna show you the mag drill here in a minute. And I'm just gonna mark a couple of these holes. And I'm not gonna do all of them. I'll probably do, mm, probably do four. Probably do like these two and these two. Could just weld it on there. I think I'm just gonna weld it just because it's quicker. I was gonna bolt it on there. I was actually gonna cut one of these on the plasma table. Um, but I'm trying to do things that I know people, like a DIY people have and people in the backyards doing that they can find stuff like this and make. And you know, my, not everybody has a plasma table. So you can use a torch and cut the holes. You, I mean, if you want to bolt it or you can just slap it up here and weld this bad boy on there. That's what I may do. Yeah, let's just do that. Whew. That boy's heavy. So, I was gonna weld it, I mean, uh, bolt it, and I think I've just started to just, my, my thinking in that was that if I ever need to take it apart or something, I could, and it wouldn't be as heavy, but really, I don't think I'll ever take it apart. So I'm just gonna weld it. It's actually really close. This is 14 inch diameter, 14 and eight. So actually what I can do, and that's 13 and a half, so it leaves a nice little V down there to actually weld. Um, I'm gonna prep this a little bit, clean it, grind it, and then I'm gonna preheat it. This is uh, cast, so I'm gonna heat this up a little bit. This is cast steel. Um, I'm gonna heat it. I'm not gonna weld it solid. I'll just weld like two inch stitches around and that'll be absolutely perfect. I've got the torque here. And what I've got on here, we actually were using that this week to do something. I don't even remember what. I'm actually almost out of a settling, so I have enough to, to heat this up. But what this is, this is an acetylene torch, but this is called a rosebud. So this is not a cutting tip. I just know trigger here on this you see to, to actually run the oxygen to cut anything so I can't cut through this if I held it long enough it might melt it but this is a rosebud tip and it's strictly for well uh, for heating up stuff uh, whether it's just putting some heat in this heating something to bend it to manipulate it to do uh, blacksmith work whatever it is uh, so that's what that's for I'm going to put some safety glasses on here
This is called a cup brush, C-U-P, cup, not cut, cup brush. And you can get those anywhere pretty much. I actually got this one at Lowe's the other day. It's just a Dewalt brand. But we use them a lot for um, getting the uh, debris off the back of stuff that's been plasma cut. Uh, there's stuff on the back called slag. We use this to get it off. Now I'm not planning on welding anything up here. I'm gonna weld, like I said, stitch weld here. And the reason I grinded everything is that way I can weld wherever I want to. I can just space them out and I don't have to try and measure because it's kind of pointless to do that on this. Um, wire wheeled up here and grinded this so the plate that we have here makes a better connection. So it's nice and uh, smooth there, first of all, nice and flat. But then it also makes a better connection when you try to weld that. Now I've got that all grinded and welded in there. I'll uh, got the welder set up. Put a little heat in that boy. Be ready to tack on there. All right, so while you were on commercial break, I went ahead and took the wire wheel. I didn't want to bore you. I took the wire wheel and cleaned up, got a welder, of course you saw that, and um, wire wheeled the whole brake drum, because I would like to just put some paint on this just to kind of make it look halfway decent when it's finished, even though it's just gonna sit in the shop, but kind of uh, OCD like that. So got that done, and then what I need is a post. So basically, this table, I want to say they're 38 inches. I should know I built both of these tables too, but oh, pretty close, 38 and a half. And so I want the vise the same thing because it's a good height. I'm tall, so you may have to make it different for you, but I want the vise to be the same height um, as that because that's what I'm used to. And so what I'm gonna do is I need this is pipe. This is. So that's, we'll just say 28, because that would put the vise. Matter of fact, let me show you the vise. So you can see exactly what it So that's the vise I'm gonna mount on it. Yes, I need to upgrade, I need a bigger vise. Um, so what I may do is actually on the top plate that this bolts to, that gets welded on the top of this post, I might actually make it out of, um, something a little bit bigger that way I can have this on there and if I need to I can put another one on and drill holes and it won't hit because the holes are not going to be in the same location. So if I do that that's a good height I need we'll just call that 28 inches I need something 28 inches 
And I'll probably go overkill because, well, got a lot of choices here. So this is a drop rack, is what I call it. When it comes off the steel rack, a lot of that's drop stuff too. It's uh, leftover from jobs, extra stuff. And we got stuff lined up here for jobs we're getting ready to do or whatever. But stuff that gets cut is called a drop rack. And we've got pretty much everything from square tubing to schedule pipe, angle, got some aluminum, um, got some specialty stuff up on top. But I keep this, we got lots of channel in here. And I keep this because this is where we come to to find parts pieces little stuff and uh i don't think there's anything 28 inches in there but i'm gonna probably use a piece of let's see here i'm thinking pipe no i've got some six inch pipe here that six inch schedule 40 that we use for parking lot bollards. So you usually have drops on that. Um, this is also six inch here, OD of six and five eight. Mm. Might work out perfect. And they just use that. Might actually have a piece there. I said 28. Actually got a piece here. That's 27. Covered in freaking oil, of course. Got a piece of six here. I said 28 to get it to that height, but if I can make it work. That inch shouldn't really make that big difference. And yes, this is gonna be extremely heavy and a little overkill. So I've still got to put a plate there, so that's going to raise that up another three-eighths of an inch or so, depending on what I've got over there. I just want to make sure the bolts, because using a bigger piece, most of the time you use like a three or four inch pipe or square tube. Uh, I was going to make sure my bolts were actually going to clear, which they will. Just barely. That's actually not a bad height right there. Very, I'm 6'1", so it's you know, probably a little high for, for most, but I think I'm going to make that work. Alright, so since we had a piece of schedule uh, 46 inch, uh, it was 27 inches, close enough for me for what I'm doing, and I didn't want to cut anything else. So what I'm going to do is just measure this, and then I'll teach you a little trick of how to get it squared up. put a speed square welder's best friend and see how far we off how far off we are and we're actually not bad at all I've got it on the cut end we made a cut for something we're actually pretty dang square what I will tell you is if it's leaning a little bit, you got a, a, a off square cut. What you can do is actually whichever way it's leaning. So if, for instance, if it was leaning to, to this direction, you would want to attack it on this side first because what that will do is actually, the heat will actually pull it back. 
you have to kind of be careful with that because if you do it too much or get it too hot and pull it, then it's going to be too far this way and you won't be able to push it back. Um, right now, we're actually extremely, extremely close. I'm going to attack it and see if I can hold it. It helps if you have a ground. So if you heard that popping, that loud popping noise, what that was is, like I said, when you have to heat, that's, I, I don't like cast steel, cast metal, pop metal, any of it. Um, 
that's why I was gonna bolt it, but I wanted to weld it just because it's easier. Most most people have a a, um, a welder, and may not have a torch or something to cut those holes with. So trying to make it to where it's you know stuff that DIY people can do. But it, I had uh, out of the eight welds that I've got holding this plate to the to the drum, two of them cracked, and that's what that loud popping noise was. And the reason is because I put the heat in the center which makes the outsides want to draw up a little bit and it pulled away and, and broke uh, two of the welds where they just didn't penetrate good enough into the the drum which is cast so what I did since it's got some heat I'm not going to touch it because it is super hot um, what I did is I just went back and made a second pass on those two and all the rest of them are fine I checked all those really well and um, there's no cracks or anything none of the tacks broke so uh, we're good on those just those two that um, Maybe I didn't go go slow enough, didn't get enough heat on it, whatever the, the case may be. Uh, you're gonna have that happen. So run a second pass on it and uh, she should be good. So we've got the vice plate. Uh, I had some 3 8 by 8, 3 8 by 8 inch flat bar. Um, had a little two foot piece left. So I just cut a, cut a plate eight inches long. So I've got eight by eight. That gives me plenty of room. And what I'm gonna do is just mag drill these. And I need some oil. Pretty quick stuff there. That's a half inch bit and three eighths plate. And as you see, it drilled it pretty much like butter. So this is called a mag drill and oh, the bit's stuck in there, the slug. These bits are called auger bits or slug bits, whatever you want to call them. Um, actually a perfect example right here. Sometimes, not every time, but the slug gets caught in there. This piece here, it's got a, a center punch basically that lines you up with your holes, you can punch them um it gets stuck that's spring loaded and so this is what's that's the slug so basically you're not drilling any of that like a normal drill bit you'd have to drill every bit of that hole whereas this slug this core kind of it just cuts the outside part um and so like i said it's slug bit auger bit whatever you want to call it um and the thing about a mag drill is There's a button on the side, so there's two buttons. You got an on-off button here, and this is your magnetic um, on-off switch. The drill will not operate unless you hit this button. You see it turn orange there? It has to be in magnetic mode, turned on, in order for the drill to work. So if I don't have that magnet on, it doesn't matter what I do, it's not gonna work. And it's just a safety device because that's what holds it. Because as a drill press, you know, the drill press holds itself. So this has got to have something holding it. So turn the magnet on and then if I've got it running, they're pretty good to have. They will, this will hang upside down. It'll go on walls, vertical, horizontal, however you want to do it. I think the biggest hole I've drilled Probably usually one inch. I think it's the biggest bit we keep. Um, I'm not sure what the biggest it'll drill, to be honest with you.
Right. Now I was saying, I went oversized on the, the sand pipe here. I almost caused me a problem, but I'm just barely getting the nuts on the bottom. But they're just a little short. I need a big inch and a half. I need some to it closer. I need some I have in both ends. I got any more than it's not. Run to the hardware store and grab some two inch, but now I know it works. I'm going to finish it. I'm going to flip it upside down. It's just a good thing. It's just a little bit over there. Just weld in between. I'm not gonna weld where that this hole is because if I do, that's why my clamp is so tight.
Well, there you go. My little project's done. I've been wanting to do this for a while because like I said, we're always moving this around. Usually it's sitting right here on the roller and um, getting in the way or having to take time to stop. And now you can just walk right up to it and use it. I really wanted to upgrade and get a new one, um, but they didn't have any at the local hardware store. So I may look and see if I can order one. Um, Lowe's doesn't carry, they got some cheap Irwins. This is a Wilton and uh, that's what I was looking for, but I want the one that's got the swivel head so you can do pipe and you can swivel it. Um, it's got the regular flat jaws and on the bottom it's got pipe and you just swivel that around, but they didn't have any. They're like 200 bucks or so. So I just have to order one. The only problem is whether or not it's gonna have the bolt, uh, same bolt hole lineup. So uh, anyway, it's all painted, ready to go. So that's it, pretty simple. Um, 3 8 plate here that was left over and you can do anything down here you definitely don't have to use a six inch piece of pipe you can weld a uh just a, a piece this size onto that center piece there and uh, or you can bolt it on and then just weld the rest of it you can use three inch i don't know if i'd go much less than three inch but <clears throat> whether it's pipe or square either one you could even use a piece of small i-beam channel i mean anything works whatever you got drop that's the thing is not using stuff that uh you know is gonna cost you money you should use drop stuff um but anyway that's that and um i'm hoping to get some more videos out got some ideas for some stuff to do but it's just uh time consuming as always and um it's always something else that needs to be done so anyway hope this uh hope this helps just a little project you can pick the drums up Usually you can probably find them for free. Go to local mechanic shops, truck um, truck shops, semis, dump trucks, stuff like that. Uh, work on heavy equipment, and trailers. This one, a buddy of mine, he had them sitting in his shop and they were in his way. He's like, man, if, if you'll get, get them, or as a matter of fact, he brought them to me. Um, he said, you can have them. So I've actually got two. I'll probably end up making another one of these to uh, keep in the shop at the house. But um, anyway, just a little DIY project, something easy that you can do from home. No matter what skill level you have, pretty simple to do. Um, I didn't go into great detail, you know, while I was doing it, kind of self-explanatory. But of course, if you got questions, then uh, feel free to ask. So, anyway, we'll see you on the next video. Hope this uh, was helpful, and um, we'll catch you on the next one.